the Golden Arches hasn't been the most innocent uber-wealthy corporation. Across multiple countries and decades, they have told plenty of whoppers. But what did this company fib about? And did they ever get caught in the act? Moreover, did McDonald's ever own up to creating a fabrication? For an item in this world to be classified as grilled chicken, it needs to meet two pieces of criteria. Firstly, it has to be grilled. Secondly, it has to be chicken. Easy, right? If a product does not get 100% on this test, then it has automatically failed. In 1999, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission believed that the chicken patties on McDonald's grilled chicken burgers weren't actually grilled. In fact, they had the authority to make the Golden Arches stop describing this meal as such. The ACCC discovered that McDonald's patties were instead cooked in an oven. These items were then branded with grill marks, chilled, and moved into their fast food eateries. Before this product was served to a customer, it was cooked in between a pair of hot plates that could be pressed together. McDonald's agreed to stop advertising these burgers as grilled, and the ACCC report definitely didn't defend their actions. It stated, The ACCC believes the extensive advertising of the burger as grilled constituted misleading or deceptive conduct. In the show Adam Ruins Everything, Adam Conover explains why Stella Liebach took McDonald's to court in one of the fast food chain's most notorious cases. Liebach was in a parked car when she spilled a cup of the restaurant's coffee onto her lap. Her drink was 190 degrees Fahrenheit, gave her third-degree burns in multiple areas, sent her into severe shock, required skin grafts to fix, and could have potentially killed her. Liebach admitted that the spill was her fault. However, the beverage she was served should have never been that temperature. All I remember is trying to get out of the car. I screamed not realizing I was burned that bad, I knew I was in terrible pain." Conover also outlines that McDonald's refused to cover Liebach's medical expenses. She had accrued $20,000 worth of bills and wanted this company to assist her in paying it off, along with making sure it didn't happen to anyone else. But McDonald's wasn't helpful. They tried to pay her a measly $800 before refusing to make a more supportive deal. Ultimately, the jury thought that McDonald's had wronged Liebach, and in the end, she agreed to settle. Corporations looking out for themselves is nothing new. But there's something else that happened, too. Conover says, Those corporate lawyers are really good at their jobs. They spent years running a disinformation campaign to convince Americans that there was an epidemic of frivolous lawsuits. And the media bought it. In 2014, The New York Times reported that Shanghai Hushi Food was accused of creating fast food products out of expired meat. This plant also allegedly made up production dates for the smoked beef patties that they vended. The whole situation was so catastrophic that the place was forced to come to a standstill. The same day that the New York Times article came out, South China Morning Post published a piece entitled, McDonald's Misled Hong Kong Food Safety Authority About Rotten Meats as Official. The publication noted that the aforementioned fast food company originally claimed that it had received items from Hushi's Habei plant and didn't get anything from the factory in Shanghai. Nevertheless, when the government stopped all Hushi products from being sold, McDonald's backtracked and admitted to receiving food from the disgraced location. The South China Morning Post additionally mentioned that McDonald's issued two apologies for not disclosing this information. In the first one, they apologized for being confusing. And in the second one, they said sorry for providing a lack of clarity. That notwithstanding, this institution declined to answer any questions about the incorrect claims that they made. Have you ever watched a fast food ad, bought the very same menu item, and felt swindled because your dish didn't look like it did in the promo? Well, if you have, there's a chance that you're not alone. Back in 2003, the BBC stated that four McDonald's UK customers weren't content with a limited-time sandwich called the Steak Premiere. These patrons felt like what they bought wasn't as well-appointed as its commercial counterpart. So they took their grievances to the Independent Television Commission. And what happened next wasn't amazing for McDonald's. The BBC reported that the Independent Television Commission then proceeded to buy multiple steak premieres. After doing so, this organization concluded that the actual McDonald's sandwiches didn't use the TV ad amount of ingredients and that the company's video could be misconstrued. They also instructed the Golden Arches to stop playing their criticized plug. McDonald's told the BBC in a statement that they disagreed with this call. They wrote, In accordance with industry practice, when making this advert, we follow the same guidelines, use the same equipment, and use the same amount of ingredients as used by our restaurants every day when serving customers. So you want to sell me magic beans? <laughs> In a 2002 article by CNN Money, the publication discussed the fact McDonald's fries and hash browns then contained beef flavoring made out of meat. However, despite that being the case, the corporation described these products as being vegetarian in the 1990s. CNN Money outlined that McDonald's did this because the products were being cooked in mostly vegetable oil. Because this disinformation was provided to the public, the Seattle Post Intelligencer remarked that a Hindu attorney named Harish Bharti filed a class action lawsuit against the fast food company. Bharti had taken an important Hindu man out to get McDonald's fries, and their religion prohibits its followers from eating beef. 
This attorney was mortified, and he expressed, I was a host to the Swami, a holy man, and I became responsible for feeding him something he would rather die than eat. The Seattle Post Intelligencer said McDonald's decided to settle. The corporation agreed to pay $10 million to vegetarian and Hindu organizations, make a couple of operational improvements, and apologize. Barty attested that they would circulate the apology, and the restaurant news resource actually published this statement online. An excerpt of it reads, McDonald's sincerely apologizes to Hindus, vegetarians, and others for failing to provide the kind of information they needed to make informed dietary decisions at our U.S. restaurants. In 2018, The Straits Times stated that Japan's Consumer Affairs Agency called out McDonald's for creating unreasonable advertisements. These promos were from the previous year and marketed the joint's Tokyo Roast Beef Burger. They also signaled that classic slices of beef were used in the sandwich. McDonald's promoted the idea that slices of beef were put into buns by showing footage and images of its roast being cut from a larger segment of this product. Nevertheless, these shots weren't honest. More than 50% of their burgers actually contain reshaped beef. Japan's Consumer Affairs Agency determined that these McDonald's advertisements had broken the law. The chain had made their burgers out to be better than they really were, and thus these promos had been misleading and worthy of a fine. In a comment obtained by The Straits Times, a McDonald's Japan spokesperson remarked, We sincerely apologize for insufficiently explaining the product. When you rock up to your local Happy Meal peddlers, you're most likely hoping that the workers won't mess with your order. But they would absolutely never do that, right? Well, an ex-McDonald's employee told Cosmopolitan about all the lies that they'd impart to their customers. For one thing, this person claimed that a server might say that they've sold every single apple pie, even if they're still stocked behind the counter. They disclosed that the staff would do this because these items take a long time to cook. This individual also admitted that the McDonald's staff would occasionally cut a filet of fish into three fish fingers. they do this to save time when they had to put together a Happy Meal. Furthermore, Cosmopolitan divulged that these workers would make vanilla milkshakes without any vanilla syrup in them. This would happen from time to time because the server didn't want to get a new container of Glop ready. So if you're ever ordering any of these items, you may want to check to verify that it's what you signed up for. It's, it's a problem, all that ice cream. The intro text on a Golden Arches ad reads, We invited real people to audition for a new show on the Las Vegas Strip. The people are real, the show isn't. What follows after this prologue is a montage of people singing their hearts out, passionately dancing, and fully believing this might be their shot at fulfilling a dream. These auditioners don't seem to know that a zombie-themed musical called Hunger in the Night is a total fabrication. At the end of this clip, another type sentence declares, We did this to remind you, McDonald's is open 24 hours. The publication Grub Street wasn't all that impressed with this 2014 stunt. They contended that at least a few of these auditioners were hoping to land a real gig. The website also proposed that some people might not have attended McDonald's event if they knew they were being lied to. Here's a slightly fun fact. Schweiz is the German word for Switzerland. McDonald's Switzerland is occasionally called McDonald's Schweiz. And in 2012, the local reported that this arm of McDonald's was required to pull a burger ad. The item they were incorrectly promoting was called the Simmental Prime Burger. This product contained Simmental beef, Emmy cheese, and some other types of fodder. According to the local, the McDonald's ad claimed that these burgers contained an Alpine cheese. But the German language agricultural information service knew that this info was wrong. An Alpine cheese must be produced from cows that reside in the Alps. This organization stated the Emmy cheese used in these burgers doesn't actually come from that region. A spokesperson for McDonald's said that this incorrect statement took form after they, quote, tried to shorten the advertising. They also promised the company would rework its ad campaign so the phrase Alpine cheese wouldn't be mentioned, and officially apologized for the mistake. In 2013, Think Progress analyzed a McDonald's website meant to help employees budget their income. This publication said that the fast food chain collaborated with Visa to create some resources for its low-wage employees. These online tools were meant to help anyone that earned minimum wage successfully manage their money. Think Progress wasn't very impressed with this resource. They believed that the website was designed to make a low-wage salary look livable. But it instead highlighted how surviving off $8.25 per hour can be incredibly difficult. Think Progress came to this conclusion after they looked at a McDonald's sample budget journal, which they described as laughably inaccurate. But what made this example so incorrect? Well, Think Progress expressed that all the totals provided aren't at all realistic. They wrote, Not only does the budget leave a spot open for a second job, it also gives wholly unreasonable estimates for employees' costs. $20 a month for healthcare, $0 for heating, and $600 a month for rent. It does not include any budgeted money for food or clothing. A McDonald's spokesperson responded to Think Progress's critique by expounding, the samples that are on this site are generic examples and are intended to help provide a general outline of what an individual budget may look like. However, this explanation doesn't hold up. There's nothing generic about a money plan that assumes its end user won't eat. 
How long does it take McDonald's to get a quarter pounder flawless for an ad campaign? Furthermore, how long does it take this company to create the same type of dish in a restaurant? If both of these questions have gnawed away at your insides throughout the years, then prepare to be potentially freed from your suffering. In 2014, Lifehacker obtained a McDonald's promotional graphic that claimed it took approximately four hours to get a burger campaign ready, while it only took approximately three minutes to get this product constructed in a restaurant. Sandwiched between this information on the promo was a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder comparison of these two products, and the spruced-up Quarter Pounder looked more photogenic. But while it's nice that McDonald's acknowledged that they stylized their burgers, this post wasn't 100% honest. Lifehacker also reposted a blurb for this graphic, which asserted, "...the burgers seen in the images are the same size with the same ingredients." However, in McDonald's' own comparison, the sculpted item looks bigger, its layer of veggies seemed taller, and the bun appeared plumper. By distorting the size of one of the burgers somehow, this chain has distorted the truth. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite fast food chains are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.